Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Paul McDonald and Rich Burden. Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, we're really excited to have you here. My name is Paul McDonald. I'm the product manager for the Google Mashup Editor. Hi, I'm Rich Burden. I'm the tech lead for the project. And today we want to tell you about something pretty special we've been working on over the past several months. Uh, it's a tool that allows you to quickly and easily create mashups and simple applications that are backed by feeds and use UI components. Now, Rich is going to take you through a demo, show you some of the really cool things. But before that, I want to start at uh, talking about the reasons why we're doing this. So let's start back at the beginning. There we go. How many of you know what this is? OK, so most of you do. Uh, Jeff Huber talked about this in the keynote. And I just want to re reiterate that this is the first mashup. It was created by Paul Rademacher. And what it does is it takes a feed from Craigslist and plots it on a Google map. Now, Paul actually did this before we had a Maps API. But it really shows you how you can use data from another website, combine it with some, uh, some other technologies, like a Google map, and create a really cool application. Now, before Paul could actually release this mashup, he had to do a whole bunch of things. And I'm just reiterating what I said in the keynote, you basically have to set up a server and hosting. You need access to feeds. You need to be able to parse those feeds and know the difference between Atom and RSS. Paul's application didn't actually have a database, but many uh, of yours will. So you need some sort of uh, database, SQL, or otherwise. You need to authenticate your users. You need to know JavaScript and AJAX. Uh, and then you need a way to display and showcase your application. So there's a whole bunch of things that you actually need to do before you can release your mashup and show the world. These actually break down into three sets of skills that we think we can address in the Google Mashup Editor. There's dealing with feeds. There's the user interface. And then there's infrastructure. So feeds, again, you have to be able to fetch cache and parse the feeds. And you have to know a server-side language to actually deal with uh, manipulating that data. The user interface, probably the most important piece of your application, uh, but also the, the hardest to get right across all the browsers. And finally, the infrastructure, the boring part, setting up the servers, making it scale, uh, setting up a database. So we thought for uh, a while when we started this project, how can we simplify each of these areas and make it easy to create mashups and simple web applications? Let's start with feeds. So uh, we believe that any application can be built uh, from feeds and backed by feeds. And usually when you think of a feed, it's an RSS feed, a read-only feed. But there's the Atom publishing protocol that allows you to write to feeds as well. And GData takes advantage of the Atom Publishing Protocol, and we do in the Google Mashup Editor. So you can not, not only can you read feeds, but you can also write to feeds, which is kind of interesting. You need a simple way to parse these feeds and get the, only the data that you want and display it to the users. And then GData also implements a common query mechanism across feeds, so you can query feeds for data and get the data you need. What about the UI? Well, almost all web applications nowadays have some sort of AJAX or JavaScript interface. And you have to make sure that it's testable and cross-browser compatible. Uh, the problem with JavaScript and AJAX today is that you have to write hundreds of lines of code for a reusable element that you'll probably use in many uh, pieces of your application. Take a calendar widget, for example. It's probably 100 lines of JavaScript that you need to test in all the browsers, make sure it works right. And then you have to get some data that is backed by, uh, have data back that calendar widget. And that's not always the easiest thing to do. So we've decided uh, to try to create a simple declarative way of specifying these AJAX widgets and backing them by feeds. And what we do is make it very similar to actually creating HTML. Now, if you're going to go down this path where you want to have a declarative way of accessing or addressing these widgets, you need a flexible way to actually use them programmatically. So in the Google Mashup Editor, you can script any of these feeds, or sorry, any of these AJAX UI components uh, with JavaScript, and will give you the flexibility you need. 
Well, what about the infrastructure? This is actually the easy part for Google. We have lots of machines, lots of serving capacity. And so we make this easy on you guys by hosting and serving your application. You can, we also include a simple data store that is actually a GData feed. So again, everything in the Google Mashup Editor is backed by feeds. You have the ability to sandbox your application so you can test it before you release it to the public. And finally, in one click, you can deploy your application on Google's infrastructure, and we'll serve it for you. Now, I'm boring, and so I'm going to hand <laughs> it over to Rich, uh, who's going to give you a really nice demo of the editor, talk a little bit more about what you can do, and create some mashups. And then uh, we're going to talk about the next steps afterwards. Rich? Thank you, Paul. This is an experimental project. Um, it's the work of a small team based in New York for the most part. We're all here today, so we'd really like to get your, your feedback and comments. Uh, so if you've got an interest in this project or some questions, please come and find us afterwards. We'll be at the Googleplex later on. What I'd like to do today is show you how to use the Google Mashup Editor. And I think the best way to do that is to actually go and build a couple of mashups using some of these simple building blocks. And then I'll talk a little bit about how we can use these concepts to build more sophisticated mashups and even simple applications. Now, before I get started, let me just talk a little bit about the mashup framework itself. It's very simple. It's three, there are three components to it. The first is the, the editor itself. And as uh, Sergey mentioned this morning, it's an AJAX application that lets you build other AJAX applications. So it helps you to edit, test, and deploy your Google mashups. The second is a JavaScript library. Uh, this is the mashup runtime. It contains the code to implement the UI elements, do data querying and data parsing, and also there's an event handling mechanism as well. Get into that a bit later on. And the third is the hosting environment, the hosting platform, and a pluggable services container. So we host your Google Mashups at googlemashups.com, and we provide access to feeds from across the web. Uh, you can get cached RSS feeds and Atom feeds. We use the Google Reader infrastructure for that, so you get lower latency and you get historical access to feeds that you might not otherwise get. But we also give you a mechanism to plug into some of the Google services. And we'll be adding more and more of these over time, but we'll start with uh, Google Base, and I'll show you how to do that uh, in a moment. So let me introduce you to the editor. You got a glimpse of this in the keynote this morning. Um, Paul demoed it. Uh, it has the familiar Google look and feel, um, Google Documents uh, kind of layout. On the right-hand side, we have the Mashup Project Browser. Am I logged in? <laughs> OK. A bit of a scare there. But uh, on the right-hand side, we have the um, Project Browser. And this makes it very easy for me to browse the existing samples and my own projects. And we think. Um, most of us learn best from examples, so we've made it easy to cut and paste from the examples out there into your own mashups. On the left-hand side is the editor. Now, we built the whole user interface using the Google Web Toolkit. And for those of you who are not familiar with this, I'd encourage you to go and talk to Bruce and Joel, who are here today. It's a great piece of technology. Um, the editor itself is an iframe uh, in design mode, very simple. And we've used an open source component called CodePress that gives us the syntax highlighting and some other cool things, and we've extended that. So let me go ahead and go and create my first mashup. So from the file menu, I select New Project. Now, mashups consist of multiple files, and the files themselves contain HTML markup, regular HTML, and some tag extensions that we've created. And those tag extensions begin with gm colon. That's obviously the namespace prefix for the Google Mashups namespace. And you'll see when I create a new project, I have a page tag already filled in. That's a required tag. And I'm going to go and create the obligatory Hello World demo. So simple enough, I can just go in and type in HTML. But we'll make this a little bit more interesting and actually put a bit of the world in the demo. Um, many of you are already familiar with the AJAX APIs that we have at Google already. There's the Search API that lets you put the power of Google Search on your site very, very easily. Um, and there's, of course, the, the Maps API that lets you put a map on your, on your page with just a few lines of JavaScript. Well, with the Mashup Editor, it's even easier than that. I can just type GM Map. And there are attributes I can use to customize the map. So if I press the Tag Lookup button here, on the right-hand side, I'll see the, the attributes. So I'm just going to 
customize this a little bit. Put in a, a latitude. And I can put in regular HTML tags as well. And what I'm going to do now is click on the test button. And our um, backend servers are now going to generate this mashup. And they'll display it to us inside the mashup editor in a component called the sandbox. So the application is just loading now. And there's my hello world. And that looks, that looks familiar. OK. So as Paul mentioned earlier, mashups are all about feeds. So we can't really call this a mashup yet. Um, I've got a feed I've been looking at earlier from Flickr. And what I'm going to do is take the URL here and go back to the editor. And the way we display, the easiest way to display a feed is to create a list. So I type in list, press on the autocomplete function, the autocomplete key. And I'm going to paste in the URL of the feed into the data attribute and go ahead and test that. And again, we'll create this mashup on the fly and display it in the sandbox. OK, so there's the map from before. And the feed appears at the bottom. OK, so that's not too interesting. We're just The feed by default is just showing the title elements of the feed. We know there's more data in there, though. So what I'm going to do is go to the feed browser and select remote feed from the pull down. Again, paste in the feed URL and go and retrieve that feed. Again, this is coming from the uh, reader uh, framework. And we're doing some parsing here to render the, the feed. That takes a little while. Usually quicker than that. OK, so here's the feed. And you can see the um, title tags here. And there's a content tag. But this feed also has, if I look closely, um, Geo points. So it, it's an RSS, a geo RSS feed. It has latitude and longitude in there. And there are also images, as you saw. So to take advantage of that data, I'm going to go back to my demo here. And to display additional data in the list, I create a template. So I can type template and autocomplete that. And by default, the template, templates just contain regular HTML and our uh, extended markup. Um, you can see this default template has a table. And it has a table row tag with a repeat attribute. And that repeat attribute tells the templating mechanism which part of the template to copy for each of the entries within the feed. You'll see also inside the column there, there's a GM text uh, control. And that just renders the text elements um, that's referred to in the ref attribute. So at this point, I'm going to go to a mashup I created a little bit earlier that just slightly extends this. OK, so here I have the, the template with an additional control. I've got the image control here bound to the image link. And let me go ahead and run that. OK, so now we can see the Hello World. and. I forgot to put some formatting on the image. So you can see the images are rather larger than we'd need. So I'll go back to the editor and load the second version of this. And what I've done here is I've extended the map so that the map's data attribute also uses the feed. And I've also told the map with the ref attribute where the geo point is, because there are different standards as geo, as geo RSS, um, various standards for um, uh, geo information. And I've also put a handle event tag in the map. We want interactivity between the list and the map since they're showing the same data. And this handle event tag lets us set up a, um, a, a subscription for events. So the map will now respond to events from the list. I've also um, changed the layout a little bit. Uh, and you can see I put the map in a list in a table. And so if I run this now, Here we have the map and the images on the right-hand side. And 
when I click on the images that have the geo information, not all of them do, you'll see the map respond. So there's a real mashup, and we created that with really just a few lines of, of uh, our extended tags, and the rest is regular HTML that you know. Not a single line of JavaScript in there. OK, so often when you're building mashups, you're going to want to have your users create and edit data, delete data. Uh, and that usually means setting up a relational database, and that can be cumbersome. So we've tried to simplify that as well. And we do that using the um, Atom publishing protocol, which we use as, as part of our GData standard. Um, what we've done is provided a read-write data store and enabled the framework to reference that data store just using feeds, using the get, uh, get to retrieve the feeds and then uh, post and delete operations to edit the feed. It's very simple to use. I'll go and create my second mashup now. Again, I'm going to use the list tag. And this time, instead of putting in the URL, I'm going to use the variable substitution syntax, which is the dollar, uh, the dollar symbol with the curly braces. I put in app here, and that refers to the application's own custom data store. And then after that, I'm going to put in what we call a stripe. I'm going to put in the word notes here. And you can think of this as a, a relational database table. It's a data set. That's all I have to do. Again, I'm going to, excuse me, again, I'm just going to test the application and watch it come up in the sandbox. <clears throat> And I forgot to do something here. So obviously, if you're going to have read-write data, you're probably going to want to have your users log in so that you can authenticate them. Um, so I have, I have some existing data here. What, to do that, I change the auth authentication flag on the page itself. And let's say um, change that stripe. Now when the application comes in, it prompts me to um, authenticate. And each mashup gets its separate uh, subdomain at googlemashups.com. So the, the, logins are, the login information is the same, but the cookies are separated. So they have some degree of separation for security reasons. So now I can click on the new item button and start, in, start typing my data. So it's as simple as that. I just uh, a little bit of latency there. And I can create new items. I can go in and edit existing items. And I can delete items as well. So one line of code, and I've got a read-write uh, task list or any kind of list. Uh, where I can have each of my users coming into the mashup, either share this data, I can control the ACLs uh, and permissions for the data store, or I can have a data store partitioned for each authenticated user. So how did I do that? Let me, let me go back to the editor now. Um, here you see I'm using the template attribute, and I've set it to simple, which is one of our built-in templates. I'm going to load a version of this that has the template spelled out in more detail. So here's exactly the same application, but with a template that's filled out. Again, you can see the repeated table row and the text control. But you can see another control here called ed edit buttons. And that shows the buttons on the right-hand side within the, uh, the list. Now, all controls have two states. They have a read state and an edit state. And they can display the information differently depending on what state they're in. Obviously, the text control is going to show a text node in read-only mode, and it's going to show an input box in edit mode. And similarly, the buttons will change depending on what mode we're in. Increase the font. Not easily. Uh, um, so the question was, can I increase the font? Is that better? Oh. A little better? <laughs> I'm a Mac guy, so I'm uh, on unfamiliar territory here. Thanks, Paul. OK, uh, I hope you can see that. Come in if you can't. There's lots of uh, seats here. Um, so uh, I've extended the template a little bit here. And I've also created a button. And there's a, an event uh, attribute for the button. And in this case, it's, it says create in there. So I've created a, a button. When I press that, it's going to raise a create event. And then the tag that's containing the template is going to react to that event and create a new entry for this feed. 
and obviously the controls will be in the edit mode. So that's very simple uh, read-write data store. Now, let's do something a little bit more interesting now. The, the data store supports very simple relations. And if I load uh, a, another example here, you can see here I've got two lists, no markup or very little markup. The first list I've bound to the dollar user data store. That's a partition store for each authenticated user, so that's private data. And I put a, a, an entity name called projects. And on the second list, I've used the data attribute again, but I, I've bound this to the ID of the first list. And this sets up a natural parent-child relationship. It's as simple as that. There's no schema to define anywhere. We just declare them as we use them, and the system takes care of the rest. So if I click on the test key here, And again, I have to um, log in. So now I have two lists. And uh, I've already got some data in here. I ran this demo a little bit earlier. So let me create a, if I click on the GDD conference project, you'll see that the tasks show up um, at the bottom. And I can go in and create a new task. Um, let's uh, clean this up a bit. I can delete these tasks. So, And you'll notice that I'm using a different template here. This template has some richer controls. It has a, a date control and a rating control. And as I'm creating these tasks, they're automatically being associated with the current project. And you can see as I click between the different projects, you'll see the different tasks. So I don't have to do any of that work in terms of building the, the schema or the queries. And I'll show you a, a more polished version of the task demo here. Again, all I've done here is created a custom template and done some, uh, some layout. I can put in my own CSS tags. So I can link and upload uh, a CSS file. OK, so here all I've done is put the projects list on the left-hand side, and then I've got a nicer um, laid out set of controls on the right-hand side. So you get the general idea. OK, for the third demo, I want to show you how to use the Google Mashup Editor with Google Base. Google Base, as you, you all know, is a useful place to put your own data where other people can search for that. Um, very easy, again, to use that with the Mashups framework. Now, what I'm going to do to start off with this time is go directly to the feed browser and select Google Base from the pull-down. And we'll be putting in other services over time in that pull-down area. Google Base has its own rich query API. Uh, and we've got a very simplified version of it here in the browser. Uh, there's a couple of common predicates. One is the housing type. I'm sorry, item type. And we've pre-filled this with housing. Uh, I can also specify a location, so I'll put my hometown and um, put in a, a plain text search here, and I'll go and get that feed. So we've got some gremlins here. OK. So you see the load, it's probably very hard to see, but there's a loading indicator on the right hand side here. So here's my um, GData feed from Google Base. There are some regular Atom elements for the title and the summary and the content. But there's some additional tags in the G Google Base namespace that begin with the G prefix. And there's also geo-encoded geo information in here and some images. So let me go and build an application that uses that. I'll create a, a new project. And I use the search tag this time. So I type in search. Autocomplete, give the search box a name, and I can specify some, some parameters. So I'm going to type in the item type as housing. And you'll see the data attribute of the search tag is already bound for me to Google Base. 
Now, to display the results from the, the search query, again, I'm going to use a, a list. So I type in the list tag, and again, use variable substitution. And here, I just type in the ID of my search tag, my search control. And I'll go and create this mashup. OK, and so now by default, I get a input box which takes the Q param uh, for my query. So I, I can go, I've already set the item type to housing. I can go in and type in loft. And you see my results come straight back in the list. OK, let's do the same, add the same templates as we did earlier. So here what I've done is I've added an extra parameter to the search. You can see that here. I've added a location parameter. And I've also created a map and had the map bound to the results of the query. So again, let me click test. And so the map comes up first. And I can type in, let's go for a co-op this time. Click on the search button. We send off a query to Google Base. And the results come back. And they're plotted automatically on the map. And for each of the items that have geo information, as I click now on the point just as earlier, they're displayed in the list. So that mashup, querying Google Base, and displaying the results on the list and in the map, just a few lines of code, and again, no JavaScript. So let me jump ahead a little bit. Um, here I've got uh, the next version of this application, and I've got a little bit more of a, a layout. But I'm going to go ahead to the third version that I have here. And I've already compiled this application. Um, and let me show you what that looks like. I've already gone, I've already gone ahead and, and deployed that application. So the little um, pop-up boxes you were seeing earlier, if, you go, if you're at the front, you'd see it says Authent authentication failed. We've set some limits, uh, given that this is an experimental system, and we're, we're only going to be signing people up um, in, in a limited fashion. We've set some limits, but we've been kind of slash dotted this morning, as kind of what we expected, and a lot of people are signing up. So that's why those were coming up. So here's my uh, fully deployed application. It's test1 at googlemashups.com. I can go in and type in a location. So this time, I'll type in San Francisco. Um, and I'll look for a loft. And I click on the search button here. And I get back my results. And so we're getting closer to the original housing maps demo that Paul and Jeff talked about earlier. But again, we're doing this without having to do any JavaScript programming. We haven't had to set up a database. We haven't had to set up the feed processing or the serving. It's all uh, done for us by the Google Mashup framework. And of course, I can click on the items here. Now, I've added a, an extra feature to this mashup. I've, I've combined the Google-based query with um, our own data store. And so I've added a little Add to Favorites button here. And all that does, ah, OK, I think I forgot to do one thing. Let me, uh, let me try that again. Sorry about this. Try adding that. OK, so I've clicked on a link, and I've copied a feed, uh, an entry from, from my, uh, the results of the base feed query, and I've copied it into my data store, just as I showed earlier. And now I can go into the uh, application and add a few of these points and add them to my list. So I think I selected that one earlier. Now add this one, and I'll add one more. 
OK, so I've added the three properties that I'm interested in. And now I've got my own read-write list of those things. Well, there's one more thing we can do with that. You'll notice also we have these uh, tab controls, and that's just another tag. Um, let me go back to the editor. You see that's the container tag here and the section tags. And there's a whole bunch of tags you can browse for the examples to, to learn about. As I mentioned earlier, the mashup can consist of multiple pages. Now, generally, the mashup is an AJAX application, so you don't want to do a lot of page transitions. Here I've got another simple uh, mashup as part of the same project that just uses a map and a template. And here I've used the map with the, uh, the data store, and it will, it will be able to access the same data that the other mashup did. And what I'm going to do here is go and deploy this as a Google gadget. So I go and say, submit to gadget. And <clears throat> the Google gadgets uh, ad module uh, screen pops up. And I go and say, yes, I'd like to add that to my Google uh, desktop. And now you see uh, our very simple mashup is going to appear on the left-hand side. And there's the map of San Francisco. And those are the three properties that I created earlier. So it's a way of doing uh, mashups that have multiple presences uh, for different applications on the web. Thanks very much. I'll hand back to Paul now. Thanks, Rich. So as Rich showed you, you can do some pretty powerful things with the Google Mashup Editor. And you can do it in a simple and easy way. We have the simple online interface that's familiar to developers. You can put any HTML, JavaScript, CSS, or our extended tags. We have a pluggable services infrastructure. So if more and more uh, Google properties add, uh, add GData feeds, we can add them to the Google Mashup Editor really quickly. And it's a standards-based approach. You start with an XML document that is a standard XML document. You end up with an HTML document with some JavaScript, all things that you're familiar with. But we're still experimental, and we need some help. So we really want you guys to join our team and build uh, some of the first mashups. There's a sign-up going on right now if you go to editor.googlemashups.com. You'll be able to sign up, and we'll add people slowly to this, to this uh, limited test. But we need you because you'll be the first developers uh, on the Google Mashup Editor and be able to uh, help the rest, of the rest of our developers as they come online. So that's it. Simple interface for the Google Mashup Editor. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be free for questions after the, the presentation. Thank you.